Smith. I'm the publicity chair and webmaster for the Portland chapter of the American Guild of Organists. And with me today, I have professor of music at Arizona State University, Kimberly Marshall. Professor Marshall holds the Patricia and Leonard Goldman Endowed Professorship in Organ at ASU and the Hedda Anderson Visiting Professorship at the Malmö Academy of Music. As a performer, scholar, and educator, she is known around the world for compelling programs as a recitalist, teacher, and as a committed advocate for the organ. And this summer, we're really excited that Professor Marshall will be a featured performer and presenter at the AGO West Region Convention right here in Portland, Oregon, July 10th through 13th. Thanks for joining me today, Professor Marshall. Can you tell me a little bit about yourself? Of course, it's wonderful to be speaking with you and anticipating the West Region Convention in July. I started the organ in my hometown of Winston-Salem, North Carolina. And I was very fortunate because there were a number of Flintrop organs that had been imported from the Netherlands. And so from the very start, I was playing mechanical action instruments and was able to delve into some early repertoire, which is the type of music I'll be featuring on the Fritz organ for the convention. Can you tell us a little bit about that recital at the convention? What can the audience expect? Yes, the theme for the convention is let's dance. And I love to dance and play a lot of dance music uh, on the organ. Now you may think that's a little odd. I'm actually not playing for dancers, but much of our repertoire is based on dance forms and written in dance rhythms. Uh, even liturgical music sometimes is based on dances like the minuet and gigue. So what I decided to do to project this long history of the organ playing music based on dance forms was to create a program that I'm entitling A Dance Through Time. And literally, we will start with the earliest surviving music for the organ, which was written around the middle of the 14th century. So we have such old repertoire. And this is music in a late medieval dance form known as the estampie. So I will include one of those estampies on my program. And I'll be taking us through the Renaissance with some Renaissance dances uh, from Italy. And I will be coming through the early Baroque with dance music by Georg Buffat, Girolamo Frescobaldi, and even uh, an arrangement of the famous Pavana Lacrime that John Dowland composed and then Svelink, Jan Petersen and Svelink, the Dutch organist, arranged for the organ. So a lot of going and coming, uh, different national schools, and of course, about four different centuries of music will be represented in my program. I'll be ending with the famous Bach Passacaglia in C minor. And this, of course, is a masterpiece of composition for the organ and written in the Passacaglia form, which was originally a dance form. Uh, instead of dancers, we'll have Bach's wonderful counterpoint to create variations over the repeated bass line. It sounds like a wonderful program. I'm looking forward to it. And you're also going to be delivering the keynote at the convention, um, also dance related. You mentioned that the theme of the convention is Let's Dance, and your, your keynote is entitled Shall We Dance? An Invitation to Dance at the Organ. And you also, well, of is. course, mentioned yeah. that, yeah, you also mentioned, of course, that organ music um, has a long association with dance forms. Can you just give us a little preview of your keynote address? Of course, um, I was thrilled to be able to open the convention with some ideas about dancing and dance music as part, it, really an integral part of the history of composing for the organ. And it was fun to think about inviting people to a dance, inviting people to the convention. 
And so it gives me an opportunity to share some of my research into early music for the instrument and how dance was incorporated. I also have some wonderful slides from uh, 16th and 17th century dance manuals that I'll be sharing with the PowerPoint uh, so that people can actually see the original sources of these showing these dancers with these different movements. It's very, very interesting for us today to imagine these uh, dance moves, even though the music I'm playing is stylized dance music. That is to say, it wasn't composed to accompany dancers, but rather it was composed to show off the organs and the virtuosity of the organist uh, in forms that people were well acquainted with. So everyone would recognize a Pasacaglia or Chacona or a Minuet. And uh, in, in some of the earlier music, we have Passamezzo and Pavan and Galliard. So these were all dance forms that were very current and everyone would recognize them the way we today would recognize a waltz. So uh, with the passage of time, of course, we're a little more removed from these dances. And I think it'll be um, good for me in the keynote to perhaps give a little bit of that history and help people understand the connections between dances that are four or 500 years old and the music that has survived that we still play as organists. Yeah, as organists, I think uh, there are probably many of us who will find it fascinating. And, you know, even speaking for myself, I'm, I confess I'm not that knowledgeable about the direct connections between, you know, the, these dance forms that you mentioned and, um, and the organ music that, that they were inspired from. And you'll have an opportunity to, uh, to put your own uh, virtuosic performance on display on the Fritz organ at St. Andrew in Beaverton. And of course, the Pacific Northwest, we're lucky to have many fine pipe organs here. Um, you'll be performing on the Paul Fritz Opus 15 at St. Andrew Lutheran in Beaverton, Oregon at 7.30 in the evening on Tuesday, July 11th. And this performance will be open to the public. And of course, Fritz organs are very well known to you. Just a couple of examples. Uh, there's a Fritz installation at your own Arizona State University. And you performed the inaugural recital of the Fritz organ at the Basilica at the University of Notre Dame. So I was wondering if you could share with us just a little bit about how the Fritz organ will be well suited to the repertoire that you'll be performing at the convention specifically, and anything that you'd like to share about Fritz organs in general. Oh, definitely. I have a long history with Fritz organs, as you mentioned. Actually, the first time I really encountered one was the conference that celebrated the inauguration of the Fritz organ at Arizona State University. This was before I was teaching there, uh, way back in January of 1992. And it was just an incredible event because Paul was sort of unveiling to the world his first large instrument since going out on his own as an organ builder. And everyone who was anyone was there. It was a fabulous uh, conference organized by the Westfield Center. And I remember then thinking, what an extraordinary young organ builder who had studied so much in Europe and who'd been able really to assimilate historical styles and put them forward in such a new, creative, very individual way. Paul's organs really have a certain uniqueness to them. And he still comes back every year uh, to maintain and commune with his instrument at Arizona State University. So I knew that organ even before I became the professor here. I've also played um, very, very small instruments by him, as well as the magnum opus, the incredibly stupendous instrument at the in the Basilica at the University of Notre Dame. I think his instruments are very sensitive to the touch, which I love, but it does take some control and uh, getting used to uh, fabulous actions. And I also like the console design because even on a large organ, like the Notre Dame organ, you feel like you can see and access everything 
very well. He really does think about how to make the console accessible for the organist, even without uh, having uh, stop pullers. A lot of times I'm able to do stop changes manually just because of the uh, intelligent console layout. I think also he is known for the quality of his flutes and reed sounds. The the flutes are just tr- transparent. They they seem to just float, and you can almost feel like you have a real flautist playing. Uh, it's it's a lovely feeling with the fingers, as if you've got uh, real, real flute players inside the instrument. And his reeds, these are the kind of buzzy. Uh, sounds. Uh, He does Renaissance and Baroque reads incredibly well. Um, You really feel like you have a a consort of shams or dulcians. And um, his trumpets are very versatile. They can work in different styles of music. So I'm looking forward to using those sounds on the Beaverton instrument his Opus 15. I don't know that instrument, uh, but I played so many uh, for its organs that I think I'll be very, very comfortable there. And I'm looking forward to making a new acquaintance. Yeah, and we are very much looking forward to um, hearing you perform there as well. Uh, so I know that you are dashing off to Europe tomorrow to go on tour. And uh, we really appreciate you taking the time to speak with us today. And uh, like I said, we're excited and really looking forward to seeing you and hearing you at the AGO West Convention this summer in Portland, Oregon, July 10th through 13th, and your performance specifically on Tuesday, July 11th at 7.30 p.m. at St. Andrew Lutheran in Beaverton on the Paul Fritz organ, a recital entitled A Dance Through Time. Thank you very much. My pleasure. I hope you'll all come and dance with me at the organ.